you know, this is how I'm living. This is how a typical college student is living. Holla. Y'all wouldn't know how to live. That's how I'm living. Uh, Video taping my planes. This is how I'm living, baby. Honey, yeah, this, get this, that picture, son. Yeah. this is my garage, bro. Trey Simmons just came to your house. Oh, yeah, Trey just stopped by. You know, I let him lend the plane to him. Put in my diamonds, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But in about a couple weeks, man, it'll be bigger. <laughs> and I'm going to get ready to that Camaro and hop in the 760, man, on some 22. He'll have to hop in that, too. going to trade the Camaro in for that, though. Yeah. I think the UW campus is one of the prettiest campuses, one of the nicest campuses in the Pac-12, and it's got to be one in the country. When Lorenzo Romar was hired, it was a really interesting time in, in Washington basketball. But keep in mind, he was the fourth choice, and with Romar, it was a no-brainer for him. Yeah, I had already been a head coach at Pepperdine for three years, and now this just finished uh, the third year at St. Louis, and the job opened up again. And I knew nothing about Coach Romar. I didn't even know he went to the University of Washington. And, and it was at that point that I realized that this was my dream job when I first got into coaching. When Coach Bender left, I was actually kind of nervous because he had recruited me. I think he's right here behind me with his old school afro. Before that, I never watched a men's basketball game. I didn't know who was on the team. Only thing I knew about Washington was that they filmed the, the movie The Sixth Man here. Uh, I decided to transfer to Washington uh, just for the simple fact that I knew Coach Romar. Um, I grew up uh, in Southern California and he was a part of basically kind of my family structure. What I knew about Coach Romar uh, prior to him getting his job here, he actually came and see me when I was in Odessa, Texas, junior college. I don't know how excited or nervous anyone was in terms of my hire. What I do know is I felt tremendous support. There were a lot of people that were still around when I was a student athlete here at the University of Washington. There was a lot of buzz about Brandon Roy coming into the Washington program. He was a Bob Bender recruit, but uh, didn't have a chance to play for Coach Bender. Why did I decide to switch from football to basketball? Uh, well, they fired Coach Rick Neuheisel, so it made it easy for me to make my decision. So just with Nate Robinson himself, when I just even think of Nate, he was so electric. And that's just one of the words that, that, that sort of comes to me, that Nate Robinson as a football player was dynamic. How good could this guy be? We saw him playing football. He was terrific at that. There was always this curiosity, well, what could he do at the next level in, in basketball? Everybody said I couldn't make it to the NBA, so I wanted to prove all the haters and all the doubters wrong. A lot of that has to do with his height. What made our team so unique was that, you know, we, we didn't start off with the greatest record. You know, we went through tough times. You know, we were newcomers. We just was trying to find our games and try to fit in. We struggled pretty much that whole year in Pac-12 play, but like the bonds were kind of formed, even though sometimes we fought. There was a lot of, uh, I thought, selfishness early on. From season one to season two under a new coach, you, you were naturally gonna have some attrition. So when we started the 2003, 2004 season, I think the expectation for ourselves was a lot higher. We started the season 04, 05 or something like that. There were a couple of guys that just didn't seem like it was gonna be a good fit for them, which was fine. Uh, but then there were a core group of guys that thought that there was great potential of what we could do here. Man, personally, I, I was going to quit, man. Or I remember just being like, we would t tell each other, literally, like, man, we're playing good. We're just not playing quite right. You know, there were some grumblings there. I mean, obviously, people were going to give him some time to put in his system, but there were some grumblings there. For a Washington team to go down to the Willamette Valley, that, that's always a, an interesting trip, shall we say, and uh, boy, that year was no exception at all. Oregon always an interesting place to be uh, and playing in the, uh, the old pit. The Oregon fans and the student section in particular ha have always enjoyed pushing the envelope. We go out there and they're just chanting, Pack 10 doormats, Pack 10 doormats. You know, hearing, you know, the fans in Oregon and everybody saying, you know, calling us Pack 10 doormats and telling us, you know, yelling at us saying that, you know, we were pretty much, you know, the bottom of the barrel. You wanted to rebel, you wanted to fight back, but there was nothing we could say because it was a pretty accurate description at that point. I clearly remember guys, you know, holding meetings, myself, Bobby, uh, you know, B-Roy, a lot of guys, Will Conroy, Trey Simmons, we all, you know, we wanted to, to have a meeting for ourselves and say, man, we got to turn it around. We just got to, you know, we got to buy in. We got to put all our egos aside 
and you know we got to play not to get the credit. But the way that that team turned it around is, you know, look, you have to shake your head. It was truly remarkable. It was, it was captivating. There was a feeling that uh, no way was that team going to wind up as the doormat of the Pac-10 conference. So the Oregon State game um, that we played was kind of where the magic happened, I think. We were down by about 16 again with five minutes uh, to go. All of a sudden, Oregon State happens, Nate hits that shot, and, you know, we're off and running. Nate had a chance to, to win the game for us at the end of the game. And I remember at the, the end of regulation with uh, the dogs down three, uh, the, the inbound coming to Nate Robinson and just kind of roll the ball up with uh, the clock not yet running, roll the ball up almost a half court, finally picked it up, goes down, drains a three-point shot. I ended up hitting a big shot. And I could see the ball coming towards the net, and I was like, oh, we won. And I just put my hands up. And we ended up winning in overtime, and that was the start of our season. Well, a shot for the ages, uh, uh, an all-time shot. At that time, no one really knew what that meant, right? Because, yeah, sure, they, you know, they broke um, a losing streak. But looking back on it, that, that was the moment that started it all off. It wasn't a fluke that we won that game. It was a fluke that we lost the first four. After that moment, we went from last place to second place. And by season's end, uh, at the regular season, the Huskies were in a position to uh, have senior day at home against an undefeated and top-ranked Stanford team coming in. Well, the, uh, the build-up for the Stanford game, uh, to say the, uh, the hype was off the charts would be an understatement. My favorite game, in the Romar era, the beginning stages of the Romar era was, was the Stanford game. Stanford was undefeated, number one in the nation, uh, smart, you know, winners. It was insane. Uh, tickets were going for five times what they were worth at the box office. I had people calling me asking for tickets for the game. I'm like, man, I, you know, I got, only got four. That was when maybe I started to pay attention more. I was actually recruited that time. Romar put me in the cheap seats up top. I didn't have that good of a view, but it was still, it was a party in there. That was as good of an atmosphere as I've seen in Heck Ed. It was the hottest team versus the best team for the entire season. So this was our first, like, big shot at something amazing, playing against an undefeated Stanford team. I think they were 26-0 when they came in. And we came out, our guys played really good basketball, played really sound, we're totally dialed in, locked in, and we upset, upset the number one team in the nation. That's the game that put us on the map. What a great moment and a great step for that program and its, uh, and its head coach and its fan base. Uh, a day in, in this arena that uh, probably is unparalleled since. The one thing that was special about that team um, in my years here is that we played with a chip on our shoulder all the time. We played fast, we got up and down. We played literally like dogs. Probably sounds weird to say this now, but we kind of played like the Warriors play now. You know, we had, we had a lot of players that can score, and uh, we was a very quick team. Just like nobody, it didn't matter who, you know, what guy you was guarding, if it was a big or a small, we just always helped each other. We always rotated, we always, uh, I, I called it control chaos. It was definitely a good times where we played. I, I miss it. I do, I miss it a lot. Kids really take, you know, coming to college for granted, man, because for us, it went fast. There's no doubt those early, the call my early Romar teams uh, had a heavy, heavy influence on, on my decision. I never would have gone to UW if, if he would have never taken that job. I was lucky enough to videotape a lot of good memories with my video camera. When I saw Bobby Jones carrying around a video camera with him, the first thing I thought was, I like it. I remember you being on the bus, bro, and we was always clowning around. I remember you always had that camera, bro. He wanted to just document everything. I'm everything, everywhere we go. Bobby having a camera was perfect for us because that stuff needed to be documented. So I used that to record a lot of trips, a lot of good memories behind the scenes, after wins, uh, on the road, on the buses, at the airports, and it's stuff that nobody never saw. It was really cool because later you get to go back and you get to see all that footage and you kind of look back and you're like, man, this was us 10 years ago. It's just something I can show my kids. Took two months. You got it. Yeah. You done. Sound G. You ain't had the hood. Like, oh. Uh, hey, Bob, can we get some of this turkey food? What we got over here, boy? About to win this national mm. championship. Who the champions right Breakfast there? Breakfast of champions.